Hello everybody, welcome to Oscar Rusty Buck, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and drop a like on this video. It only takes one second and it makes a massive difference in how the video performs in the YouTube algorithm. So, wow, we have really reached the peak of nothing happening in the off season, uh, as evidenced by the fact that, yeah, I, I'm making a video about Kirk Heinrich because he is a player that I have always been a big fan of and I thought was pretty underrated for most of my life. And I realize I've never really talked about it like at all, which is fairly understandable because why would you make a, uh, a Kirk Heinrich video? Which, you know, maybe I'll be looking at the analytics on this video after it goes up and I'll be asking myself that very question. But uh, I figure for this second channel, I've gonna, I'm gonna be treating it kind of like a, I don't know, like a diary of my thoughts about the basketball research that I've been doing. I've been diving into the 2000s hoops a ton lately. Uh, it's just been super fun for me. And one thing that stood out to me was that the Chicago Bulls were actually better than uh, I feel like they're ever given any credit for in the late 2000s before drafting Derrick Rose. Now, drafting Derrick Rose ultimately kind of ended Kirk's career as like a really really good player who put up really impressive numbers because he kind of became a role player from there uh, he became a uh, shooting guard in Derek's rookie year and eventually his backup and then went to Washington and then by the time he was back with the Bulls he was older and not as good and not really putting up as good of numbers now don't get me wrong he was still a quality role player but he went from genuinely a very good starter to just like a pretty good backup and the Bulls made the playoffs three times before that Derrick Rose uh, drafting happened. I don't know why I phrased it like that. That was weird. Kirk, of course, was, I believe, the seventh overall pick in the 2003 draft. Uh, notoriously, he's the best player from that draft. No one else was really that good that year. And I just wanted to highlight how good he was very early on in the first four or five seasons or so of his career, where for Chicago in that four-year peak, he averaged 15 points, six 6.4 assists and he shot 38% from three on four and a half attempts per game. Again, as I mentioned, obviously not some stats that super jump out to you, but 15 points per game, like back then, I believe that's in his rookie season. Kevin Garnett was second in points per game, averaging 24.2 along with Paige Stoyakovic. So scoring volume was much lowered in that time. Uh, uh, and I do think Kirk was miscast in many ways as like kind of having to create more offense than he would like just because that Bulls team, you know, it was like uh, Luol Deng, Tyson Chandler, Eddie Curry. Uh, there was just not a lot of shot creation to go around. Ben Gordon was really their main go-to guy for that. And Kirk would be asked to do a little bit too much. And as a result, his efficiency would not be good. But one area where his efficiency was always awesome was from three. And I think that's something that's stands out about him specifically is I believe he is almost uh, somewhere towards the top of the list for Bulls all-time three-point makes and you know as a rookie guard in 2003 taking five three-pointers a game is kind of bold it's not really something that uh, was really all that common and especially to think for the Chicago Bulls who for my entire time that I have paid attention to them have just completely disregarded and disrespected any level of importance or validity to the concept of three-point shooting. Like when Derrick Rose had his MVP year, they were starting fucking Ronnie Brewer over Kyle Korver because defense, you know? And for me, it's, it's nice to see a little bit, at least like a more liberal approach to the offense that was probably not all that common then. It would not be too common for the Bulls future. Uh, the head coach of the team, Scott Skiles, being a guard, I think did make him give more of a green light to Kirk than many other coaches would have given him. Uh, and he benefited from it pretty substantially. Uh, that said, the offense is not really where Kirk was super impactful. Really, where he was great was on defense. And the fact that he only made one all defensive team is not at all reflective of how good of a defender he truly was. Uh, the guy was pretty much the definition of just effort 
on defense. Don't get me wrong, Kirk was a smart player, and he had decent enough size as a guard, even though he was not really much of an athlete at all. Uh, more of an athlete than you might expect, but like not a super athletic player. You know, every white player with no muscle definition who's ever played is sneaky athletic, and I guess you could maybe label him as that, but uh, not the craziest physical tools to, as a defender, but just very hard-nosed and gritty and would put in all the effort you could imagine and was just like, look, I can shoot. I can pass pretty well, but inside the three-point line, I can't really score. Overall, not much of a score. The way I'm going to make my money, the way I am going to be in the league for over a decade is I'm going to play defense, and he played the hell out of that defense. Dwayne Wade, uh, in a recent interview clip that I saw, actually proclaimed that Kirk was one of the best defenders he ever uh, had to go up against, and what's interesting about that is that Kirk actually defended uh, Dwayne in the first round matchup in the 2007 playoffs where Kirk did not play well on offense but he really slowed down Dwayne Wade and the Bulls managed to sweep the defending champion Miami Heat. Uh, very weird bit of history that that's what happened as they went from winning a championship to getting clowned on by Eddie Curry and Kirk Heinrich. Definitely a weird sequence of events. In the two playoffs prior to that, though, Kirk stepped up pretty dramatically in that playoff setting. He had two different years where he averaged 20-plus points, and between two first-round exits with both series going to six, in those two years in the playoffs, he averaged 21 points, seven assists, two steals, and he shot 44% from three on five attempts a game. So, yeah, one of the better role-playing guards throughout league history for sure. Uh, unfortunately, I feel like Derrick Rose showed up and completely took all spotlight away from him, which is unfortunate because, in theory, Kirk could have been such a good two-guard option next to Derek because Kirk as I mentioned very capable three-point shooter so he would be great spotting up very good defender so if between two guards one of them was much better Derek Rose could defend the lesser of the two Derek Rose is a fine defender but not as good as Kirk it would have worked really well but he I think went to Washington seeking more opportunity didn't really work out there and uh, yeah uh, a little disappointing, but ultimately Kirk Heinrich is a freaking Bulls legend, man. And really the way that he earned that status, it's not just because the Bulls were supremely lacking in talent after the Jordan era and desperate to grab onto anything that resembled it, but it was also just the guy had a mental approach to the game and a tenacity that was just impossible not to respect and appreciate. While he was not always the most talented, talented player in the world. As cliche as it may be, he was very much a heart player, uh, a passion player, and uh, that kind of passion, that kind of effort is always going to be appreciated by a franchise, especially when you get the impression oftentimes with your team's players that they're just there to collect a fucking paycheck. So yeah, I wanted to pay homage to a Bulls legend and as previously mentioned, the best player from the 2003 draft. Shout out to Rudy for editing this video and goodbye.